pop-up Pop Farm Music Advent Calendar. calendar. Oh, I, a, 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 ha, he, he. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to Pop of Lemmy's Advent Calendar. I hope the autofocus didn't jump in. Today we are going to deal with an Infinity Boy, one of the finest kinds of Infinity Boys out there. Okay, this thing is going to result in one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen come out on the other side of an infinite series. Okay, this thing is just fucking delicious. And this is why I called it capital C, the variable that no one ever uses ever. Okay, so we are going to make use of it today. Don't forget to check out Papa Flemish shop 10 to 15% of everything over the course of the whole December. Let us go ahead and get started. At first, I would like you guys to notice that this is basically the difference of two squares. If we were to interpret our one as being negative i squared, then our denominator would be decomposable into k minus i times k plus i. And now you can do stupid old partial fraction decomposition. I will see if I can see at a glance what this is going to evaluate to, so infinity boy. And then we have something over k minus i, and then something over k plus i, meaning I would like to not get a k up here in the denominator, I would like to get an i up there in the numerator, not denominator, I'm terribly sorry. Meaning we would need a negative sign right here to get rid of the k's, and then we would end up with 2i, meaning 1 over 2i, and this should actually do the trick. Also, I would like to do some little index action right here. Let um, k plus 1 be equal to, so I want to let k go to 1, so new variable to n. Okay, meaning we are going to end up with, this is going to change to 1. Also, we are going to have k is going to transform to n minus 1, so k minus 1, minus i, same spiel here. I did this in order for us to track things back to a well-known function, okay, a function we have used extensively on this channel in the last time, on the last months, whatsoever. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by 2i, because why the hell not? Okay, meaning we have 2i xi is going to be exactly this thing right here. Now, what is the special function I was talking about a second ago? Well, if you guys remember the digamma function, it has some peculiar properties. Okay, one thing of the digamma function we have derived is a certain expression for it, namely that digamma of z, which is kind of the derivative of the gamma function, okay, is negative Euler macaroni constant plus an infinite series starting from one of exactly one over k plus 1 over k minus 1 minus z. This is what we have derived before, link will be in the description probably. Meaning, we are basically there if we were to add the Euler macaronis on both sides, okay, we would end up with kind of the infinite series that we have right here. We have two of those infinite series. If we suppose that everything converges, we can break it up. Then we only would miss a factor of 1 over k right here, okay? Meaning I'm going to break stuff up, meaning our infinite series is thus equal to two infinite series, starting from one. On the one hand, we have one over k minus one minus i. And then negative the infinite series from one to infinity of one over k minus one plus i. Like I said, we are going to kind of get our one over k here. Okay, I'm going to put this in brackets. Because, how can we get the 1 over k? Well, we can add a zero to everything. If you have a pile of apples and you don't place another apple to it, you still have your pile of apples. Meaning we could indeed add a factor of 1 over k and subtract it right again. Same spiel here, plus 1 over k minus 1 over k. Now, this thing right here is exactly our Euler macaroni plus digamma of z, okay, negative z, meaning negative negative i, okay, negative i, right here, I hope you can see where this came from. And then we also have this thing right here. This first part is thus Euler macaroni plus digamma of simply i this time. Now, what we are left with is digamma, um, is Euler macaroni minus Euler macaroni is going to cancel out. Also, we have negative one over k, negative and negative is positive, plus one over k. Everything is going to cancel out nicely. Isn't that cool? We have traced stuff back to something we actually know a lot about at this point. Meaning, 
our infinite series times 2i is thus equal to digamma of i minus digamma of negative i, okay? I'm rushing through it a bit because uh, I want to keep those videos short, okay? You, you know the business. Next up is the functional equation for the digamma function. We have derived this before already. It's pretty similar to the one we have on harmonic numbers. If we have digamma of k plus one, for example, then, okay, it could be also z plus one. Then this thing is equal to digamma of k plus one over k. Meaning, if we have digamma of negative i, we can actually isolate this by subtracting one over k on both sides. Okay, meaning this thing right here is equivalent to saying we have digamma of, I'm going to plug stuff in, negative i is thus digamma of one minus i, and then minus and minus becomes positive, so plus one over i. Meaning overall, if we plug this into here, digamma of i, and then we are going to have negative digamma of one minus i, and negative one over i. Just some simplification right here. If we have one over i, we can expand this by i over i. i and i multiplied together becomes one, a negative one by definition. So we are simply going to end up with positive i. Just some simplifications. Next up is an identity you might still know about, and this is well, the reflection formula for the digamma function. We derived this by using the reflection formula for the gamma function and differentiating it. If we have digamma of z minus digamma of one minus z, we are going to end up with pi, but with a negative sign in front because the differentiation of natural log turned out to have a negative sign then. Um, yeah, and because of the negative z right here times the cotangent of our z. Meaning, if we were to plug this shit into here, okay, we are going into the finals after a few minutes. Negative pi times the cotangent of our z is exactly i at this point. So um, also there's a pi missing. i times pi plus i. That's a lot of work, okay? And this is just a special case of a more generalized version. Now. I would like to go into more detail about the cotangent of i times pi. At the moment we have a valid solution, but I would like to make this into a more nice solution, something that looks quite sexy, okay? If we have the cotangent, that is the cosine over the sine, we can bring this into the Euler form. This is going to result in negative pi times e to the, in a normal case, i times x, if you have this, but now we have instead of x, i times pi, so we are going to have i squared times pi plus e to the negative i squared times pi over, also there's a factor of i missing because we have the reciprocal of the sine and in the Euler form the sine is something over i. Now take the reciprocal, i comes to the numerator. So we are going to have e to the i squared times pi minus e to the negative i squared times pi plus i. i squared by definition is negative one, okay? Meaning we are going to end up with, and I'm going to bring the negative sign down here, so positive and negative. Let's get rid of this thing right here. We are going to end up with pi times, okay, we are going to have i times e to the pi plus e to the negative pi over and also e to the pi minus e to the negative pi plus i. And do not forget what this is equal to, okay, two times i, times here. Okay, this is a fucking stupid variable. Who the fuck uses stuff like this? You might notice we have i on both sides. We can cancel it out to end up with one right here. Also two is not equal to zero. It's the successor of one. So by definition, we can divide by it. Meaning overall, our infinite series is thus equal to this thing in itself is the hyperbolic cotangent, okay? Cottage cheese, probably. So one half. And then plus pi times e to the pi plus e to the negative pi over two times e to the pi minus e to the negative pi. This is a valid expression, but I would like to make this even nicer. I would like to have a really nice form at the end. And we are going to do some more playing around, okay? I know I'm rushing through it. Do the video in half the speed and maybe you are going to understand everything I did right here. Now, I would like to factor out e to the negative 
pi on both the numerator and denominator, it's going to cancel out, meaning this thing right here is going to result in a one, this right here is going to result in a one, we are going to raise the power by two right here, and now we have this expression. Let us also bring those two fractions together. What is missing is a factor of e to the two pi minus one then up here. So we are going to have e to the two pi minus one plus pi times e to the two pi plus pi over two times e to the two pi minus one. Woo! It's getting exciting. And one last thing I would like to do, because we can actually get rid of the factors of 2 and this factor of e to the 2 pi minus 1, okay, by doing some playing around, we can add a factor of pi to it and subtract it once again. So adding a zero is something we can do. Don't forget the, the metaphor with the apples, okay? Pi plus pi is going to result in 2 pi. Now, I would like to break this up into the fraction of 2 pi over this shit, okay? It's going to end up with 2 and 2 is going to cancel out pi over e to the 2 pi minus 1. And also, what are we going to left with? To be left with. We are going to have e to the 2 pi minus 1. Okay, T times 1, this is the same expression as e to the 2 pi minus 1. I'm doing this on purpose. And then, what is left right here? This has been this term. And then we have pi as a common factor, pi times e to the 2 pi plus pi times e to the 2 pi minus 1 over 2 times e to the 2 pi minus 1. And you might notice we have e to the 2 pi minus 1 as a common factor, leaving us with a final fucking beautiful expression of pi over a uh, pi plus 1 over 2 in this case, plus pi over e to the 2 pi minus 1. <sighs> Let this sink in for a moment, okay? We had this thing initially, okay? K squared plus one, okay? This thing initially, and now it ended up being this thing being comprised of pi, okay? Irrational boy, number two, this the only odd prime, okay? It's fucking stupid, nice, stupidly nice. Then we have e, okay, our favorite boy, and then e raised to the two pi. This is groundbreaking, yeah. This is quite a fucking beautiful result in calculus and analysis whatsoever. I love my anal. If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, recommend, channel, if you like, if you want to support channel, a bit more by those teachers, I create a support channel on Patreon. Up until next video, have a flamble day. Ciao, I hope you guys do enjoy the advent calendar. Up until now, woo! <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>